Welcome to our 2020 Wave 2 launch event. We're excited to be hosting our first ever virtual launch. In years past, we've organized user group gatherings around industry events and technology conferences, but this year we're rolling out a new format due to the pandemic and our increasingly global customer base. I'm honored to represent the work of hundreds of team members in our metals practice that work tirelessly with our clients and across our product development teams. Today we're focusing on Wave 2 of 2020, and we're launching some incredible new features, including our first ever solution built on Microsoft Power Apps, which is going to really open up the Microsoft platform to our customers. We also have an entirely new slitting optimization tool, which is going to make a big impact on our flat roll customers. Slitting is a really common process in the metals industry and, and, and across our entire client base. And the planning process is extremely complex. There are many variables to consider, such as ID and OD and weight, thickness, which is why we're thrilled to be launching an optimizer that'll streamline the process and help our customers get better yields. Today we're going to cover what Crow and Microsoft are launching in Wave 2, but before I get into that, I want to talk a bit about the current state of enterprise technology and what we're seeing from our partnership with Microsoft and our clients in the metals industry. We're at a really exciting point with Microsoft business applications and ERP in particular. There's been a big shift of customers moving enterprise applications to the cloud, and Microsoft has been at the forefront with Azure and Dynamics 365. Dynamics 365 is now the fastest growing SaaS ERP offering in the market for mid to large size companies. And it's got the largest install base. This is really significant. You may be asking yourself, what's driving this momentum, especially in the midst of a pandemic? For answers, let's turn to Crow's 2020 Technology and Metal Survey. This is the ninth year of the survey, and we had responses from more than 300 executives in the metals industry, from producers to service centers, pipe and tube, wire and cable, ferrous to non-ferrous. It's always a great source of insights and trends in metals. This year, we found that 85% of respondents said they're planning to leverage advanced technologies, such as AI, machine learning, or IoT, in the next five years. That's a staggering number. How are they going to be able to do that? Developing and deploying an AI or machine learning solution is really hard. It typically takes a team of data scientists and subject matter experts and engineers working for extended periods of time to formulate, develop, and deploy a sustainable solution. Well, part of this momentum that we're seeing with Dynamics 365 is companies getting to the cloud so that they can more easily tap into these new technologies and Microsoft's making it easy for customers by pre-packaging these AI and IoT solutions that work directly with Dynamics 365. Microsoft has literally tens of thousands of developers working on Azure and other SaaS technologies that are at their core competency. And our clients are then able to benefit as we help them bring these technologies to life. Let's take a look at a practical example of how we're able to leverage Dynamics 365 to help our metals clients connect their shop floor to their business applications. It starts with capturing machine telemetry and data in Microsoft IoT Hub. From there, the IoT Intelligence add-in takes the raw data and surfaces and contextualizes it to create insights for users to take action on in Dynamics 365. This framework also allows us to create dashboards showing real-time information, like in this example of a coil transfer car. We can not only track equipment uptime, but also speed, temperature, and power consumption. Bringing this information to the cloud and combining it with the capabilities in Dynamics 365 around production, quality, and asset management is really making an impact at our clients. Microsoft's investments in these advanced technologies is a big part of what's driving the momentum with Dynamics 365. This helps customers harness the possibilities of the cloud so they can stay competitive. With that, let's dive into Wave 2. In this next wave, we have literally hundreds of new features launching as a result of six months of investments from Microsoft and Crow. This pace of innovation and the ability for customers to stay up to date is made possible by the continuous update model, which you see here. This allows customers to take small incremental updates to stay current as opposed to large costly upgrades. Before we get into the CMA features, I want to touch on a few of my favorites from Microsoft. To start, 
Microsoft is launching an entirely new module for engineering change management. This is going to be huge for our clients, as metals companies require strong product data management and version control. In a world of increased quality, safety, and reliability requirements, managing engineering changes is critical to success. This feature set brings structure and discipline to product data management and enables items to be defined, released, revised in a controlled manner that's supported by workflows. Next, I want to highlight another entirely new module Microsoft is releasing in Wave 2, Asset Leasing. I'm proud to share that this module was originally created by Crow. A couple years ago, we developed a lease accounting solution to help our clients respond to new accounting regulations. As more companies struggled to conform with these requirements and demand grew for this functionality, we decided to license the IP to Microsoft so our customers around the globe could benefit. The asset leasing module helps companies manage the full life cycle of a lease, from initial recognition to monthly journal entries to impairment and termination. It also streamlines the accounting process by automating complex lease calculations, keeping companies compliant with GAAP and IFRS accounting standards. The launch of this functionality is another example of our close relationship with Microsoft as not just a systems integrator and ISV, but also a partner around IP. We're thrilled that this functionality is now available to thousands of Dynamics customers worldwide. The last feature I'll highlight for Microsoft is one we've been anxiously anticipating for some time now, a new shop floor reporting interface. And Microsoft did not disappoint. The new interface provides workers with a modern user experience for shop floor reporting that's been optimized for touchscreens. It has all the core manufacturing execution capabilities, such as starting and stopping jobs, reporting input and output quantities, and recording scrap. It also has more advanced capabilities. For example, if you have a HoloLens device, you can scan QR codes to get visual instructions on a process such as swapping out a tool for the next operation. The instructions are overlaid right where the work happens and can account for changing conditions while taking a worker through a guided experience. I know a lot of our clients are interested in mixed reality use cases like this, especially in a post-COVID world. That's all I've got time to mention today, but be sure to check out all of Microsoft's latest features in the release plans available online. All right. Now it's time for the updates coming in CMA Wave 2. Casey, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. All right, it's time to show you the CMA features we're rolling out in Wave 2. Our team has poured thousands of hours into these features, and we couldn't be more excited about what we're releasing. Now, our product ideas come from real-world implementation experiences working with our metals clients. As you can see, our customer base is diverse, and it covers various subsectors of the metals industry. We're always getting feedback and adding functionality to address unique industry requirements. Now, the first feature we're showcasing is slitting optimization, which Andrew mentioned earlier. Now, this feature is creating a lot of buzz at our clients, and here's why. It's going to save them time and money. The feature uses advanced mathematics and specialized algorithms to automatically generate slitting patterns based on supply and demand. These powerful optimization routines consider thousands of slitting pattern combinations far more than any human could do manually. As a result, it saves companies time and money through better yields and reduced scrap. Brian is going to show us how it works. Thanks, Casey. Having been personally involved with implementing slitting solutions for a large part of my career, I find this next feature extremely exciting. Three difficult questions when planning a slitting order are, one, how many molts of each size? Two, which supply coil to cut from? And three, what are the estimated weights for each size? This is where the slitting optimizer comes in. The example we'll see today is a customer requesting two cut sizes, 8,100 pounds of 8-inch and 1,000 pounds of 3-inch. The customer has also added a max 40 OD spec. When we check inventory, we've got two 48-inch wide coils available. Now normally, a production planner would need several calculations and some trial and error testing to arrive at the best layout. This takes time and does not always arrive at the best option. During our demo today, I'll show how to run the optimizer, compare solutions, and select the best fit for a production order. Now let's switch over to D365 and see it in action. I've got our sales order with the customer information, including the cut sizes, the weights, and the IDOD specs from the customer. From here, I can launch the slitting workbench. 
Once the slitting workbench launches, I can mark the customer demand to be included. I can load available inventory. And then I can run the nesting calculations. On the nesting page, there are several tabs of information. The first provides an overview for each possible solution. Weight totals are shown to provide production planners summary information at a glance. These include supply weight, cut size weight, any return to stocks or side cuts, as well as estimated scrap and edge loss weight. In this case, the optimizer has identified two different solutions. Looking at this, we can see two different supply tags are chosen. The larger supply tag is likely a new master tag bought from the mill, and the smaller one is likely a return from a previous production run. The overview doesn't provide all the detail, and so we provided a visual. The cut from visual shows information about the master tag being used, whereas the cut to visual shows the layout that the optimizer is recommending. In this case, we've got one 3 inch cut, three 8 inch cuts, and then a 20 and a half inch return to stock. In addition, the system's recommending a split based on our customer ID and OD specs. For those who like more detailed information, we've also got cut from and cut to tabs. The cut from tab shows information about the master coil being used, including any weight or split information. The cut to tab shows the nitty gritty detail for the job. For both sales order demand lines, we've got estimated production weights, number of cuts for each size, as well as comparison to the original sales order demand weights. Switching between solutions updates the displayed information for all of these tabs. So now we're at a decision point. The production planner may want to minimize scrap and get as close as possible to the customer order, in which case they would want to use solution one. Or the planner may want to minimize side cuts and use smaller master coils when available in which case they would use solution two. In this case, we're gonna select solution one, which most closely matches our customer demand. After clicking the OK button, the system populates the slitting workbench with all the relevant information from the nest. Now the production planner can continue on with their normal job. As an overview, we took multiple demand cut sizes and weights, multiple supply coils, and we created two possible solutions for a production planner to review. After selecting a solution, the relevant information quickly populates the slitting workbench and is ready for production order creation. This efficient process makes the difficult task of planning slitting jobs a lot more manageable. Now I'll toss it back to Casey to introduce our next feature. Thanks, Brian. It's really exciting to see the automation that we're bringing to the area of slitting all directly in D365. Now the next feature we're going to showcase today is a native out-of-the-box customer portal experience that we've built on top of Microsoft Power Apps. Power Apps Portals helps empower any audience inside or outside your organization to engage with your business data and processes through low-code interactive websites. The CMA Customer Portal is built specifically for our Metals clients to enable digital self-service for their end customers. Now, this can significantly reduce the amount of time required to respond to routine customer service requests, freeing up salespeople to win more business. Daniel will show us more. Thanks, Casey. It is exciting because it's essentially opening the ERP system to your end customers. In this scenario, I'll service somebody outside the organization and using the CMA customer portal, I have access to my purchases, my shipments when they're set to arrive, and a lot more. Let's get started. After a successful signing, you'll see the homepage where you can learn a little bit more about the CMA customer portal as well as some of our favorite metals images. First, and foremost, our order inquiry page is what we'll hop into. So I'll select that menu item, and I can see now my orders. Everything historically that I've purchased, I now have visibility and access at my fingertips. I can search based off my customer purchase order, the sales order number, or the contact person who I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So to filter out this list, I can enter my customer PO. And by clicking the filter button, it'll narrow that list. And further, I can see the status of this order at the header view, as well as the requested receipt date of my original request to then when it was confirmed. Selecting the order number hyperlink, 
I'll dive in and view more details. At the top, you'll see your header level information similar to the last page. In addition, we've got the total weight. Down at the bottom, we now have our product and our line detail. You can see the description, the dates, the statuses, but more importantly, the quantity that was ordered in addition to the price. CMA has added conversions tied to unit of measure, and we brought that to the customer portal. Moving along, we'll return to the home page and talk about our second feature. On the shipment tracking page, very similar look and feel, I have my shipments. We've added in the CMA customer portal statuses, first being processing, meaning that the order is planned but has not been picked or shipped. Then you have picking, where the status means the material handler is outsourcing the material from their inventory. Next, ready, which you'll see here, in which the truck has been loaded, but paperwork has not been processed, or the truck hasn't yet hit the road. And then last, obviously, the shipped, meaning that material has been in transit or is already shipped to my facility. I'll select this ready status shipment, and we can see more information that I'm curious about. Things such as the bill of lading number, the ship to address, the weight of the entire truck load, my order number, the pro number, commonly used as a third party carrier identifier if a common carrier is being used. And then what materials on that truck? And here I've got that one piece at 272 pounds. Now we'll return to the homepage and talk about our last key feature. Opening the MTR search, once again, very similar feel, but most importantly, and such a critical component to our metals clients is that MTR and the heat, the chemical composition of that material. Rather than having to contact uh, my associate, I can see that information as the customer on my own without having to have any other sort of communication. I can look up the heat number to quickly dive in to that MTR. When doing so, the list is filtered. We see similar information tied to my order, my product, and opening up the hyperlink gives me access to downloading, printing the physical document in which that MTR was sent. Just to recap, the CMA customer portal focuses on three key features, order inquiry, shipment tracking, and MTR search. With the Microsoft Power Apps, we can bring to market features like this now more than ever. We are excited to hear the feedback from our clients and plan to add future capabilities and upcoming releases. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Casey. Thanks, Daniel. All right, the next feature we're gonna showcase is toll billing. Many metals companies offer toll processing, receiving material owned by their customers and processing it to their specifications. They charge a fee for this service and is often invoiced at the time of processing as opposed to shipment. Since it's the customer's material, typically, there are credits required for any scrap, especially with the higher value material. These scenarios create challenges in typical ERP systems, but we're addressing those head on for our metals clients in wave two. Zane is gonna show us more. In this scenario, the customer has requested for one of their galvanized coils to be leveled and cut to length. They want us to process the material now and they'll send us a release later when they're ready for the material to ship. The customer has requested we cut their coil into two different sheet sizes. We charge the customer a processing fee based on the material's commodity, thickness, width, and length. And we also offer the customer a scrap credit because of this high value material. In the demo, I will enter a new sales order line and I will utilize CMA's new toll order processing wizard to automatically create our production order and our sales order lines. After the services are complete, I will generate the customer invoice knowing the material will ship at a later point. And with that, let's jump into D365 for a live demo. Our scenario begins from the sales order line where I will utilize CMA's new toll order wizard feature. The first section of the wizard will prompt for me to select the supply coil that our customer is requesting we cut to length. The next section of the wizard prompts me to select the demand that the customer is requesting we cut to length. In this case, the customer's requested 90 pieces of 48 by 96 and 105 pieces of 48 by 144.
Once my demand is entered, I have the opportunity to check the expected scrap loss from the production process. The next section of the wizard is for the operation being performed. In this case, the operation is leveling and cut to length. You will notice once the operation is selected, the runtime is automatically calculated for us. The next section of the wizard is for pricing. One of the most powerful features of this part is to control the invoicing process at time of production or at time of shipment. You will also notice the pricing for the services automatically pull into the wizard. In this example, I will add a separate line just for the scrap loss credit for our customer. Our review form is the final step in the wizard. From here, we can view information about the route and the operation being performed. We can view the input coil being cut to length. We can view the expected output from production. And finally, we can review the pricing for the services being performed. Once I complete the order, two very key functions are automated. First, our sales order lines are automatically created for us. And second, a new production order is created. I can view the creation of the new production order from our new toll processing workbench, which is a centralized view of all toll processing orders. And once the order is completed, I can view the production results directly from the workbench. I can view our actual production scrap loss, and I can review the actual inputs and outputs of production. And finally, from the workbench, I can generate the invoice for the customer based on the services performed. All right, I just walked through an entire toll processing order example. I created a sales order based on the customer's instructions. I reviewed pricing, added a scrap credit, and created the production order directly from the toll processing workbench. Once the services were performed, we generated the customer invoice. I hope you are as excited as we are for what this feature can bring to the metals industry. Thanks, Zane. Now the next feature we're showcasing is plate nesting. Plate nesting is a fully integrated program within CMA that's designed to maximize yield and minimize scrap on orders that require shearing or burning. As you'll see, the nesting engine is built into quoting and order entry, resulting in more competitive pricing due to material savings. Chad is going to show us more. Thanks, Casey. In this scenario, let's say a customer requests a quote for eight rings with a 23-inch OD and a 13-inch ID be plasma cut at a three quarter inch hot roll 836 plate. In on hand inventory, we have two pieces of 48 by 120 inch plate and six pieces of 36 by 96 inch plate. As a salesperson, I'll create a quote and from the make to order wizard, I'll enter customer demand for eight rings. Then, I'll use CMA's new plate nesting feature to quickly generate a nest against real time on hand inventory to determine optimal supply, which maximizes yield and minimizes scrap. Next, I'll enter an operation for plasma cutting, and finally, I'll complete the wizard to create a new sales quotation line for rings and calculate a competitive price which accounts for both the material to be consumed and the processing to be performed. Now, let's jump into D365 and I'll show you how it works. Starting from the sales quotation, I'll launch the make to order wizard, search for three quarter inch hot roll 836 plate, and enter demand for eight rings. While we're nesting true shapes in this example, it's important to know that this feature can be extremely helpful for quickly determining optimal supply when shearing sheets as well. Now we'll enter specs for our ring. Remember, our customer ordered rings with an OD of 23 and an ID of 13. Notice the system auto-calculates the perimeter, or the burn inches, 
As you'll see when we enter operations, this is used to calculate more accurate run times, which helps with the production scheduling, estimating cost of processing, and quoting customers for processing. Now that I've entered demand for my rings, we'll go to the next page to identify the supply we'll use. The system populates the demand we entered at the top and loads the supply that we can use to fulfill this demand at the bottom. Without CMA plate nesting, a salesperson must manually review supply and demand and do their best to determine optimal supply to satisfy demand, which is often inefficient and error prone. However, with CMA plate nesting, all you have to do is click the plate nest button and the system does all the work for you. Using its built-in nesting engine, the system instantaneously evaluates customer demand in real-time on-hand inventory and determines the optimal nest which maximizes yield and minimizes scrap. The first thing you'll notice is that the system generates a visual depiction of the nest with images of true shapes embedded. And each part of the nest is color-coded to identify whether it's a cut size, a drop that is being scrapped, or a drop that is being returned to stock, allowing you to quickly review and validate the nest. In this example, you can see that the system nested eight rings on one 48 by 120 inch plate, returned to stock one drop, and scrapped another drop. Now you may be asking yourself, how does the system know which drops to scrap and which drops to return to stock? Well, another great part of this feature is that it automatically dispositions drops based on company-wide drop policies. Not only does this further streamline the overall nesting process for salespeople by taking the burden off of them to disposition drops, but it also reduces the risk of scrapping too much. If the visual depiction of the nest is not enough, you can navigate to the Lines tab to view detailed information about the nest, where you can clearly see the quantity and width or length of the starting stock, cut sizes, and drops for each pattern. Finally, at the bottom, you can review the total section, which lists the gross, net, return, and scrap areas and weights, as well as the overall scrap percentage for the nest. If after reviewing the nest, you decide you want to adjust supply that gets included and re-nest, you can cancel, add or remove supply from consideration, and then re-nest. Otherwise, if the nest looks good, you can simply select OK to apply the nest. Notice the system automatically marks supply based on what was recommended in the nest and adds return to stock lines for all drops that were dispositioned to be returned to stock. It really is that quick and easy. Now that I've determined my supply, I'll go to the next page to enter my operations. Since we're plasma cutting rings out of plate, I'll enter an operation for plasma cutting. Notice the system automatically calculates an accurate runtime based on the burn inches of the ring, which we calculated earlier when we entered our specs, and the burn time setup table, where we define how much time it takes to process certain material. Again, this is so nice because it leads to more accurate runtimes, which helps us with production scheduling, estimating cost of processing, and quoting customers for processing. Now that we've entered our operations, we'll go to the next page to review what we've done. From here, we can review and confirm the demand, supply, and operations we entered. Not to mention, another great feature I know my clients will love is that the system automatically calculates and defaults a realistic promise date, which accounts for the estimated time to complete the job, the machine capacity, and the production schedule, further reassuring salespeople that they will be able to uphold customer commitments. And after reviewing the nest, if everything looks good, you can complete the wizard. And you'll see the system adds a sales quotation line for my rings and calculates an all-in price that covers the cost of material to be consumed and the processing to be performed. Gone are the days where salespeople have to waste precious time nesting in their head or waiting for a programmer to do it for them. As I demonstrated, with CMA plate nesting, now salespeople can nest with the click of a button and they don't even have to leave D365. They can do it all within a streamlined order entry process. They can rest assured knowing they have an all-in price and a realistic promise date and they can quickly send a quote to the customer ahead of the competition. Thanks, Chad. All right, let's jump into the next feature, remnant devaluation. In the metals industry, it's common to have material partially used during production, which results in inventory return to stock for use at a later time. Now, the type and dimensions of the remaining material determine whether those remnants should be scrapped or kept for resale. As you know, companies can have a substantial amount of working capital tied up in those partially used materials. The remnant devaluation table helps more accurately track the decreased value of those remnants while charging the original order for the difference. Lindy is going to show us more. Thanks, Casey. All right, let's take a look at the example Chad shared. 
As we can see, our starting stock was a 48 by 120 inch wide plate with a unit cost of $30 per hundred weight. The objective here was to cut eight rings out of this plate and put the leftover remnant back into inventory so that it can be used at a later date. The nesting solution Chad demonstrated uses the organization's drop policy to determine which remnants will be held in inventory and which ones are to be scrapped. The CMA drop policy table defines the rules used for that determination. Also note that the cost of the finished ring comprises of starting stock cost plus processing charges and scrap charges. That is assuming that the scrap cost is getting allocated to the finished material. Since the remnant isn't considered as valuable as the full purchase plate, a process for devaluing the remnant is required. The organization's policy is to place a value of $20 per hundredweight on plate of this commodity, thickness, and dimension. Currently, the process to assign a new cost to the remnant is challenging at best. Let's go to the next slide and review the new capability we're introducing. To address this problem, CMA created an easy to manage solution to automate the assignment of remnant value based on each organization's rules. The rules are defined in CMA's newly created remnant devaluation table, where organizations have the flexibility to configure the remnant and or return to stock cost based on a variety of flexible options, including site, product attributes, numeric product attribute ranges, and dimension ranges. The remnant devaluation table not only impacts the make-to-order bomb calculation, it also impacts the production order estimation job in the case of a planned return to stock, production return to stock posting in the production picking list journal, production return to stock posting in the production RAF posting form, and production order end job. The result is that the remnant devaluation table impacts both production order physical and financial costs. Now let's go to the next slide to review and verify numbers. For that, we are again going back to the plate nesting example, where we consume a 48 by 120 inch wide plate and produce eight finished rings and have a leftover 48 by 27 and a half inch piece of plate to return to stock. As we can see, the top section displays the bomb calculation, where the returned remnants value is based on the starting materials cost of $30 per hundredweight. The value placed on the remnant using the starting material cost is calculated by multiplying the weight of the return to stock piece, 280.76 pounds, by the starting materials cost of $30 per hundredweight, resulting in a calculated value of $84.23. After setting up the remnant devaluation table and rerunning the same example, the bottom half shows the return to stock costs based on the remnant devaluation table. As we can see, the material cost, processing charges, and setup charges do not change. However, there is a difference in the return to stock cost. The system has consulted the remnant devaluation table, determined that the correct value for a remnant of this type and size of material should be $20 per hundredweight and has automatically assigned a cost to the remnant of $56.20, using the same math as before, but now using $20 per hundred weight instead of $30 per hundred weight. So 20 times 280.76 all over 100 equals $56.15. We can also see that the return to stock valuation difference impacts the finished material cost, and now it is valued at $46.32 per hundred weight, whereas previously it was $43.20 per hundred weight. So in summary, with the introduction of the remnant devaluation table, companies can now make a more informed decision and sync their costing strategy with D365 finance and operations. And more importantly, they can make changes rapidly and seamlessly to affect their overall manufacturing and costing operations. I can personally say that I am very excited for this new functionality as this will completely revamp costing in finance and operations. Back to you. Well, that wraps our demos for today. Tons of great new features that are going to make a positive impact at our clients. If you'd like to learn more about what we showed today or see the broader list of functionality launching in Wave 2, check out the release plan online. And if you're already live on D365 and CMA, you can also reach out to our optimization team to help you configure and activate these new features. Now, if there's anything you didn't see today and you think would be a good addition to the product, please log it on our new idea portal. You can view all our suggestions and even vote on ideas submitted by others. Lastly, keep an eye out for our next newsletter to learn about what's planned for the next wave. That's it for today. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.